Joining us now is Democratic Congressman Colin Allred. Congressman, thank you very much. Um, so I, I think that this does show there are some standards yeah. left in Washington. Why was it, um, why did it get to a third vote? Do you think it's, yeah. do you think it's, well, hold on, do you think it's fair to expel him given that he has not yet been convicted? Well, I thought that the previous vote before the Ethics Committee had concluded its investigation, issued their report, that that was a little premature. And so I, along with some other, I think, people who had kind of the constitutional principles in mind, voted not to expel then. After that report has come out, and it's so damning, the due process, I think, has been served. It was time for him to go. What was so damning in the report for you? Well, you know, I think the abuse uh, of the public's trust, of course, but also bring you know, disrepute on the institution. And at some point, we are supposed to police ourselves. We're a separate branch of the government. We don't need to wait on the executive branch to, uh, you know, have him declared guilty, we can do this ourselves. We can say this person is not becoming, it shouldn't be a part of this body. There's a lot of talk about precedent and sets. The other people who have been indicted and there has been a lot of evidence against them have resigned before yeah. it ever got to a point where they would need to be expelled. Um, I wonder, how do you build back trust? I mean, George Santos was just one of the many ways that people have looked to the institution and said, what the heck is going on there? Yeah, well, you're right. And I think we're seeing an attack on institutions in general, I think, in our country, and a, lock, a lack of trust because of folks like this, because they're attacking these fundamental ideas that we all kind of grow up with, that, you know, if you're going to run for office, you're going to try and serve, you'll do it with some sense of honor, some sense, uh, you know, of, of shame, and that if something happens, you'll resign yourself. We should have never had to expel Mr. Santos. Uh, but I think we can restore trust, uh, but it's going to take us removing some of our most extreme politicians out there, like Ted Cruz, who I'm running against. <laughs> you are in, in Texas. Let me ask you about the presidential election. Um, how do you see things playing out? Do you think President Biden is, is going to be able to take on Donald Trump if Donald Trump is the nominee? Are you sure that he can win? Well, I think there's nothing unusual about an incumbent president running for re-election. What is unusual is that the Republican Party looks like they're going to nominate the same guy for the third time. I think the last time that happened was FDR. Uh, and so it's, it's strange to me, uh, the grip that he seems to have uh, on that party. And also, I was there on January 6th. I was on the House floor. Uh, I took off my suit coat and thought I was going to have to defend a door, because when you're the only former NFL linebacker in a room with legislators, that's probably going to fall to you. Uh, to me, this is something that we shouldn't even be considering. Why do you think you can beat Ted Cruz? Well, I know we can. I know that we can't afford six more years of Ted Cruz misrepresenting us in the United States Senate. I'm a fourth generation Texan. I was raised by a single mom who was a public school teacher, I played football at Baylor. I know who we are, and we're not who Ted Cruz says we are. And so what we have to do in this campaign is bring together a coalition of folks who want to have a senator who actually cares about them, who actually go to work every day for them, not podcasting three times a week, doing whatever you can to pit us against each other.